Welcome to His House of Learning, podcast number seven. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Salt and Light, the Covenant at Home. The opening passage reads, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they might see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. My dear brethren, I do very much thank you for just being along this pilgrim's you know you know you know path the narrow way to whatever may be the end of this life on this side of heaven serving that of our lord and savior jesus christ for i've spent the last few weeks needing repenting and receiving his compassion that he gives to his children offers to his disciples and he bears upon his sheep as with that i've come to a number of strong revelations and that's the thing not revelations and that are new and that are just miraculous well i guess you say miraculous because in the sense that these such such you know such understanding of scripture can only come through that of the holy spirit a mind indeed perception resurrected from the dead in that sense but what i mean by not miraculous in the sense that I am miraculous. For my dear listeners, there is nothing unique about me. I implore you on that now before we get started with this this talk about salt and light. For the common perception is what? As some of you may have heard is, well, that means you preserve the world and you... And you cast out darkness from the world. No. No. That may occur. But it won't be because of your effort. And some of you may say, how blasphemous. How blasphemous. Well, bear with me. And you shall see. And it's just plain reading. In fact, the vast majority of the text I'll be reading for you will be the, from the very words of Christ himself. This was not meant to be confusing or unclear. So let's go back to verses 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt, this is chapter 5 of Matthew, salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. And what is this salt referring to? Salt of the earth, but if had lost Saul had lost his fate, his, his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, be trodden under the foot of men. You go to the book of, Levit- of Leviticus, chapter 2, verse starting with verse 12 to th- and 13. It reads, As for the oblation of the first fruits, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor. So remember, offerings are being made of which to repent and continue perpetuation of the covenant made between the Lord and his people. Verse 13, And every oblation of thy meat offerings shalt thou season with salt, neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. And really, what is the primary offering of those redeemed in the Lord? Our very lives. All of us and nothing less. Thou shalt not suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. 
So need a salt. I need preserves. Purifies who? The follower, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The ones that have accepted his sovereignty, have accepted his word. Don't worry, there's more to be said. Regards to light, verses 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Take this, take the, let's, you know, let's take this one verse at a time. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The immediate image that a lot of people can construe is a city is a glowing searchlights, spotlights. Full, a city is set on a hill cannot be hid. No, meaning that you're the light of the world, meaning, meaning that you should stand out so much that people know who you are and who you serve. But bear in mind. How far does this light go? There's a reason why that the subtitle is The Covenant at Home. Because my dear listeners, we're oftentimes, and it's true, we are to indeed influence the world at large. But once again, can we control who receives salvation? Can we control who will Surrender to the Good Shepherd and be a sheep who will follow the Master. Who will say, God is good and I am not. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No. That all must be received by Jesus Christ. I say this because look at verses 15 16 look at look at the influence we have and look where it starts verse 15 neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it is giveth light unto all that are in the house so first off what's the, what is the influence of the glow of the light from each individual person? A candle. How far does the candle glow go go? Essentially the immediate surroundings, at best, at best, the immediate surroundings. And if anything, the best you can do is what? Light your steps in front of you, or wherever you shine that light, for the most part. Some are brighter than others, but for the most part, it's within your immediate surroundings of your person. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Because you can't get more salt. From, the, from another man, right? You can't get more salt from another man. And you can't become less salty. Nat just, just naturally salt. That's one thing that's, that is very true. Salt cannot just lose its saltiness unless there is... There's two only two methods. Two methods. You involve a substance of which will chemically change it. Or... It is mixed in with other substances of which are not salt, and thus this was his saltiness. So salt does not naturally just lose its flavor unless you introduce foreign substances, corruptions, perversions, falsehoods. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast down and be trodden under foot of men. And where does the and who and where does the candle light the light unto all that are in the house? 
all that are in the house. So with that said, where does the covenant, the exercising of the covenant begin when it comes to every single believer with it first and foremost within his home? Your household is the first and last place where the Lord is sovereign, where the covenant is to be exercised. And when men look upon that house, do they know that that is the Lord's domain? Where there's all this talk about, oh, we need to take dominion. We need to take dominion. We need to preserve the world, preserve everybody else. But my dear listeners, how much have we been faithful in fulfilling, maintaining, gauging in the intimate covenant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ right here? within our four walls. That is why, that is why for me, I don't care if you unsubscribe in the future because you know what, you've grown you and you're gonna move on and do greater things for the Lord, you've matured, and you're ready to serve out yourself more, you know, more milk to new believers and meat to, to older believers, great. I'm glad because it's not me. It's not any man of which preserves what it is the very word, the very spirit, the very sovereignty of the Lord God reigning over your heart, your mind, your soul, your body. You don't need me or any other man. If I'm just here to teach you and encourage you, edify you for a time, great. Whether it be for a few days, a few years. But if you move on because you've got more to do than just listen to me, oh, great. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I've done my part. I've done my part, but not but here online, but all as well as Remember, I'm reading this because if I don't engage in this in my home, this means nothing. This means nothing. And then finally, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine before men. And that light sh shines before who? Whoever is in the house. Whoever is close enough to really... Right? that they may see your good works, a light in the darkness. A light in the darkness. And glorify your Father which is in heaven, because ultimately that's the goal. You can for If you forget about me days, weeks, years, few years later, don't even remember listening to me here online, but you are listening ever more closely, ever more with greater familiarity to the voice of the Good Shepherd. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And just to reinforce the fact that this is not a matter of, you know, that the prime concern isn't, isn't, you know, isn't, oh, we need to preserve the world and chase away the darkness from the world. Well, whether or not that's going to be your role in the long term, is not of primary concern. The primary concern is what? If darkness, if preservation and the spirit and the word of the Lord is in your home, starting with you and your household, whether you're single, married, children, with you, your household, so that Men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And if you expect grand transformation of preserving the world, because that's saying this, you know, the more abstract because it's more distant. Abstract notion of, oh, preserving the world and casting out darkness. If the world be in darkness, it shall be in darkness. If the world would stay dead, it will be dead. Faith. Those who are unrepentant, they shall remain blind and rotting. 
is not, and they, they will not. I think your light, the salt that is in you, will do nothing, will be of no consequence until they are in covenant with the Lord and receive it. There is much nonsense teaching out there in regards to, oh, well, you just need to show the love of Jesus. You just need, you just need to do good works and just, you know, just do things that just charity, acts of charity that will do. And that is preserving the earth. And that is shining light in the darkness. No, my dear listeners. Yes. Now, yes, they will witness your light in darkness. They will see you preserving what is in your life in a dead world. In a world of sin. But they will not. They will not be preserved. They will not be out of that darkness until what? They receive that light and that salt in, unto themselves. Because right before verse 13 through 16, you have the passage of what? The Beatitudes. And remember, what are the ends of the Beatitudes? After being poor in spirit, being, being those who mourn, those who are meek, those with hunger and thirst after righteousness, those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Keep that in mind, that's a part of being the salt of the earth is being pure in heart, that you see God. That you see truth, that you see life, that you see the way to go. That you are a peacemaker. But 10 through 12, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. And yet, just like, just like the perfect sacrifice, just like the light of the world, the capital the original and parts the light unto us who are redeemed by his perfect blood so your mindset can't be quote quote winning on this side of heaven but on fulfilling the will of your heavenly father that is winning that is winning. And whatever he do, he he you know he does with you, rejoice and be glad. Verses 17 through 20. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the or the prophets. I am to come to destroy, not to de sorry. I I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, shall do and teach them. Here's the thing. And I want you to hold me to it and everybody else within my media circles need to hold me to it. I am to not preach and teach anything of which I am not submitting to and putting into practice because not my will, but the Lord's will be done. For we are saints, my dear brethren. Saints still sin, but saints are not sinners. Saints are no longer complacent, resigned to the weaknesses of the flesh, the confusion of the mind, the brokenness of the soul, for we are new creatures in Christ. And no longer in the deceptions and wickedness of the heart. For aren't we not filled with the love of God? The Lord of Lord and King of Kings. For we are saints. We sin, but we are not sinners. We are no longer resigned or complacent with such things, 
but we press into, we abide in, that we may be the salt and light of the earth. And that begins where? At home. At home. Unto your family, unto those who live live in or in around you. And also, if not a blessing, to those in your immediate vicinity. No abstractions with neighbors. No, no, no. Those within your immediate vicinity. When they see you, when they see your home, when they hear you, when they see the interactions with your family, do they, do, do they see a light in the darkness? Do they see salt, something of that of which is purified and clean within a filthy, perverse, corrupted world? And whether, and whether or not they admire it or hate it, is that what they see? Is that what they see? And why? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And then, and then verse 20, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. It must exceed the scribes and Pharisees who knew the word, who knew the law, who knew, who really, realistically knew the gospel. And yet, they were not the salt of the earth. They were not the lie of the world. Why? Because they still lived for themselves. They were, they were still, you know, they still, you know, served the gods of their belly. They still wanted in some shape or form to be equal with the Lord in authority and power wherever it may be, in their own little, own little pre-heavenly kingdoms. If not perhaps, they have, if not perhaps a number of them wouldn't be surprised if they had gone, gone so far into darkness, so far into corruption, that they even denied, while still accepting. Have you ever met those, these kind of people? Such a reprobate mind. Those who... Those who are like, yeah, there, there may be, if not, is a God, but I don't care because overall I can do whatever I want and he's not going to be able to do, do, do anything about it. I've met a few of those. I really probe and pray that they are not beyond, re, you know, redemption. That they are not of a reprobate mind. One that is, conscience is just seared. Oh my. Go to chapter 6. Verses 19 through 23, chapter 6, 19 through 23. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither must, moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? What do you allow yourselves to see? What do you allow yourself to take in? What light? Do you, do you allow the light? What's the light? My dear listeners, my brethren, especially my brethren, was the light, the word of the Lord, the ways of the Lord. There's no substitute. And if all you see, all you, all you absorb through your eyes is darkness, well, guess what? You're going to be blind. No better off than those outside of the covenant. And dare I say, perhaps because you're not in the covenant, I don't know. This is where you and the Lord have to do a heart check. And if you know that you are of his sheep, you are of his disciples, you are of his redeemed children, amen. But otherwise, 
Remember, if you're all, if you're doubtful, well, all I gotta say is this: it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. For indeed, free will. I'll touch on free will later on. Free will is something, but it's something that is given over. As Jesus Christ himself said, not my will, but yours be done. Nothing more, nothing less. So, the righteousness that sees out of the scribes and the Pharisees, who stored up their treasures and all they cared about was this life, having success and dominion and victory in this life. This life. But no, the salt and, light of the, salt and light of the world looks forward to after this life, looks forward to the, to the fullness of resurrection. Looks forward to standing face to face with our Lord and Savior, who sits at the right hand of the throne of the Father. Go to Mark chapter 9, 42 through, through, through 50. Mark chapter 9, 42 through 50. This is going to take us back to the Old Testament in regards to the salt in the sacrifices once more. And remember, where does being the, being the salt in the light of the world begin? Somewhere, someplace, randomly throughout the day? No. First and lastly, in your home. Starting with yourself and with those within your household. And your first witnesses are who outside your household? Your neighbors. What do they see? What do they hear? And whether or not they admire it or hate it, does it glorify the Father? Mark chapter 9, verses 42 through 50. says, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed, than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Are you listening? It is better to give up things here in this world for the sake of your soul, for the sake of the souls of those around you, especially those in your own household, in, under, your, under your jurisdiction, within your own jurisdiction. It is better to sacrifice, to lose things on this side of heaven, than to retain them and lose everything because you or I or whoever thinking that we were righteous thinking that we were justified before the Lord because of our good works because well I did the things I said these things and so thereby I'm right before the Lord but that's not being salt and light of the earth my dear listeners Brethren, that is not exceeding the righteousness of those scribes and the Pharisees. Verse 46, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And that's the thing you know when you're salt and light of the earth is out. Darkness and corruption over the time, and this is the thing, over the time, as as the Holy Spirit has justified you before the Lord, and you be continue in your sanctification of being a saint, of becoming more like Christ, that increasingly, that increasingly, sin, death, all that is dark, all that is evil, all that is perverse, increasingly growing, just, it just, no, it doesn't sit well with you. In fact, it's putrid. 
It's unacceptable. It's only to be burned. Only to be burned. And you understand the gravitas of the sin of which you were forgiven. And you understand that this sand, the sand that you know the evil of the world, and that it cannot, it cannot have its way. It cannot you cannot be in partnership? You cannot be in association. You cannot be in communion. You cannot be in covenant, friendship, nothing with the world, for it is dead, and it will pollute you to no end. And it will take you into the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, because they were good friends with the world. As 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 uh, people always point out the legalism of the Pharisees, and yet the legalism of the Pharisees didn't stop them from being friends with the world. Shaking hands with darkness. Exchanging good favors with death. No, it's the it's the it's the hypocrisy of claiming that to be right with the Lord God and yet to be in bed with his enemies. Verse forty eight through fifty where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, the seriousness of the evil that indeed pervades our world. For everyone shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace with one another. My dear brethren, have salt in yourselves, and have peace with one another. For everyone shall be salted with fire. And only those who have salt in themselves, only those who are the light of the world, shall endure. Shall endure that sprinkling. For the light of the Lord, the righteousness of the Lord, it burns. It bakes. It'll turn everything into smoke but only of that which is pure and of him will endure and come out even <laughs> more refined untouched in fact in fact just full of gratitude for such a hot fiery bath but as for his enemies including those who pretended to be his own well for everyone shall where, sorry, verse 48, where their worm dieth and the fire is not quenched. They'll just keep burning. Those who are the salt and light of the world know no deed. That like Paul the Apostle said, we, no less myself, are the chiefest among sinners. I, when I know, when I realize more and more of this the sin, the evil, the, the darkness the Lord has saved me from, has redeemed me from, the more that, the compa that compassion I've received from him because of my repentant heart, thereby I can exude that compassion onto others, especially those who are of repentant heart. And I can edify them, I can comfort them, I can guide them, but only in his word. And they must, we all must, individually, when it's all said and done, just like our Lord Savior Jesus Christ said, did alone. The light of the world, the perfect sacrifice, pure sacrifice, in a world of darkness and death, sin, evil, corruption, wickedness, perversion, abomination of all, ma of all manner, he stood alone, persecuted and tried, and yet he overcame. Thus, we must all do so. But glory be to God that he doesn't just, you know, that we have each other, my, my dear brethren. Those who are far, but also make sure you have those as few as they may be who are close. 
But remember, we all stand before the Lord alone in the end. But the redeemed for a short period of time, and then we are all two together. Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Let's go to Luke chapter 8, 15 through 18. Luke chapter 8, 15 through 18. Chapter 8, 15 through 18. And it says, But that on the good ground, this is, re this is re in reference to the parable of the seeds and the sower, but that on the good ground are they which is in an honest and good heart, have having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So those who are the good ground with an honest and good heart, meaning what? Having heard the word. Those of us who have heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So we've allowed the word of the Lord into our hearts and, ma and from that manifest new life, a life in him, where the old things have passed away and our will, and our will be damned and his forever be done. And then it continues on from there, from that parable continues on saying, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. So now it's talking about those who enter in. Which could be who? Those who live in the house, those who are outside the house. But guess who's going to be entering in most often? Those who live in the house. But setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in see the light. Are you a light to those who enter into your home? Once again, I don't know your day-to-day -day walk. Go before the Lord and make and make you know make this make this uh, ado. However, however He directs you according to his word and the power of his spirit. May we, may we all just shine brighter and hotter and continually, but notice the focus is on where? Immediately around us, are we a light that shines before men, especially within our own home? For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Everything we say and do eventually will be known to somebody, somewhere, in and outside our home. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. This is in reference to the talents. And remember, the one who received from Christ and did nothing with it, more was taken from him. So don't receive the light. Don't receive the salt. Don't receive the seed and do nothing with it. But as, as stated, verse 15, because even, even for us older believers, those most more mature, those who have been in this walk longer, we still must continue in an honest and good heart. Meaning what? Do we have honest good hearts because we're so... No. An honest good heart. What does an honest good heart do? It is heard the word. For we continually hear. We read. We know. We understand the word. We keep it and bring forth fruit with what? Patience. We bring forth fruit with patience. Or there's a lot to be patient for, isn't there? Inside and outside home, there's plenty to be patient about. But, there's, but unless that patience is born, there will be no fruit. There will be no shining light before men. There will be no salt that is a sweet savor. I'm married. And I pray still. I still believe. I still hope. I still wait. 
to have more of us in my home. Indeed, may I be a light to those who enter in, my wife, my children, my family, my neighbors, my brethren in the church. May I be a sweet savor unto the Lord, so they may who glorify who the Father in heaven. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to the words that I'm reading? And you can read for yourself, and that is the glorious thing about these revelations is they're revealed. <laughs> they're revealed. Nothing hidden. There's no secrets. Let's go on to John chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Listen to what our Lord says. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And what does the light of the world do? What does the light of the world do? I must work the works of him that sent me, the Father, the Lord God in heaven, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Why? Because it's dark. They're blind, they can't see. But yet, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And thus he imparts to us, his followers, to be lights of the world. But remember, the light is out of a candle. And that light has no long-term effect, no redeeming quality, unless it is taken upon, not from us. There's this idea that, you know, you get your candlestick and then you light somebody else's candlestick. No. No, because guess who they gotta go to to receive that light? You can point them to the light can point them to the perfect sacrifice salted and just all his purity and grandeur but your salt your light is for you so we cannot preserve the world by people just witnessing our good works we cannot chase out the darkness but people just from, from, from us just showing the love of God. The darkness goes. The darkness goes and it stays away in the hearts, minds, souls, if not bodies of men, when they surrender. When it's no longer their will, but every time, when, they, when they reject the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes. And they too become a daily sacrifice justified by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for we are to give ourselves up just as the Lord has did done every day of his life unto our Heavenly Father I think I'm reaching go to John chapter 12 Starting with verse 23, this will be our final passage. And Jesus answering them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So our wills are no longer in the... are no longer... no longer of, of a major concern. 
For we bring forth what? The fruit that is the resurrection. The new life. The way, the truth, the light of the Lord. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, et unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Father, glorify thy name. Jesus, as they go going on, then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it, it thundered. Others said, An angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever, and how saith thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Listen carefully. Read it carefully. John chapter 12, starting with verse 35. Then said Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of light. And that light is back in us. Believe in the light, so you may, that you, that I, may be children of light. Verses 37 through 41, a little hard to swallow. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. What else is new? That's what people say. I'll see when I believe it. <laughs> I've been alive for too long to know that that is complete, utter tripe. No go. Residual nonsense. A bold faced lie. Or as we say here in the, you know, here in rural places, rural, you know, rural places, you know, whatever. Anyways, <sighs> excuse me, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, Isaiah, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I sh should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Because no matter what people see, what they witness, once again, the very, so dead, they're so dead, so blind, so seared, that they refuse life, they refuse truth. They'll stay in the darkness, and they'll continue to, to you know, continue to to uh, to rot, and everything else along with that is, you know, that's the work of their hands. Verse forty-two. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. My dear listeners, my brethren, do we love the praise of men more than the praise of God? Because that will indeed stop us from being salt and light of the earth. Jesus cried and said, let's, con let's conclude with this. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. 
and he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And remember, if you're the light of the world, if you're the light of the world, then you have to what? You can't just have a Bible. You can't just have a sermon series. You can't just have your have your pictures and signs and decoration, whatever. Bible verses or crosses or whatever, anything like that around your house or outside of it for that matter. And I'll shed light, no. No. It's those who believe and believe in what is faith in action. For that is how the light shines. That is how the salt has its savor. That's how it has its quality. That's how that covenant is made. That covenant is maintained before the Lord. That is how, you know, that you know that is how people, primarily starting with you, of course, but the people living in your home may see, may know, may understand, perhaps. But indeed, the way the truth of life is, is known, it's seen, it's witnessed before them, before you. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For the first coming of Christ is what? That whosoever may believe in him shall not perish. But it's a gift that has to be received. A many men can, wit can witness the saltiness of our life and the light of the candlestick that we carry around with us in this dark and dying world. But they have to accept it from the Lord for, for themselves. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting meaning what there's a colon after everlasting and i know that his commandment is life everlasting what is life everlasting whatsoever i speak therefore even as the father said unto me so i speak life everlasting is the word of the lord jesus is the word of the lord he's the light of the world He's the perfect sacrifice. So in conclusion, my dear brethren, are you a daily sacrifice salted with a sweet savor of righteousness to that of the Father because of the mediation of the risen Son of God? Do you shine the light of His Holy Spirit, same Spirit of which dwelt upon him, so that the Father may be glorified. Are we just, or are we what? What, as the Pharisees said, they, sh that's the thing, verse 43, for they love the praise, people who just refused to confess that they follow the Lord, that they are, and to be open about, open, openly show that, hey, I, yes, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So hence, oh, well then, yes, I will totally join this campaign, this ministry, this outreach that focuses on preserving the world and being light in the darkness, but minus, minus, 
minus the uh, the imperative, the commandment of letting the word of the Lord be known, and for men to come out of darkness, to no longer be in death, but to accept his gift, that is, of everlasting life. The very word, the bread of life, the water life, of the Lord God. No, 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 because I show the love of Jesus and because I said things that were Christ-like, I said and did things that were Christ-like, thereby I'm preserving the world, I'm shining light in the darkness, I'm casting darkness, not, not only am I shining light in the dark, I'm casting the darkness out, no, no, no. The light is seen, perhaps, the Lord knows his own. The light is seen and the salt is, is there. The Lord knows its savor because the Lord is the one who will be able to ultimately tell. Because it's because it's that which is supposed to be offered to Him. Our good works are to be offered unto Him, and part of that of this that of the gospel message of salvation, which leads to what justification being made right before the Lord, and sanctification being made to saints, continually growing to be more like Christ as the adopted children of the Father in heaven? Well then, that's like all of us. My dad brought me, brought me before the Lord, and as till I surrender to the Lord, not to the will of my earthly father, but to the will of my heavenly father, that I indeed was imparted the light and out of the salt. So my father did both. And we can say, well, it wasn't perfect. It was, and I've heard that too many times, my dear listeners. I conclude with this. No more well, we're not perfect, and we're never going to be perfect. Shut up with that nonsense. Our Father, who thou who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. O Lord, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us not... And forgive us, excuse me, forgive us our sins, for they are many. As we forgive those who have sinned against us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, O Lord, deliver us from the evil one. May the glory and power be yours, not ours, but yours, on earth as in heaven, forever and ever and ever. I say unto you, O Lord, may my righteous works be a sweet savor unto you. May the light that I shine that is of your spirit be of that of which men see, and whether they admire it or hate it, may have something that is worth glorifying the Father. First and lastly, within my home, within these four walls, Lord God, I fear you more than men. Have your way with me. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out.